with mobile television and how it's going to take on here in the United States. We'll also find out what's going on around the world. Anytime you have a question, comment, answer to maybe even a question I throw out, just raise your hand and just jump in. Don't wait to the end. Truly interactive is the idea. And we're going to learn about each one of our panelists. There's no PowerPoints, no slideshows. This is all about one-on-one -on -one contact regarding which, which each company is doing as well as where the overall industry is going. Question real uh, quick, who here watches mobile TV? Actually on their mobile phone. One, two, two, three, four, okay, fine. Now at least we get an idea. You listen, listen to mobile TV. Okay, that's an interesting aspect. So let's start with each one of us. We have a change here, actually Greg, or George is here, but Troy is here representing Nokia. So Troy, do me a favor real quick. Give me about 90 seconds of what you, who you are and what Nokia is doing in this aspect. My name is Troy Evans. I'm the Senior Business Development Manager for Branded Content. You might think that's pretty weird to have a branded content group within Nokia, but I look after all the, the fun companies within Nokia, so Sony, uh, Disney, Warner Brothers, MySpace, Napster. So really trying to figure out what their digital content strategy and how that relates to Nokia. So understanding their portfolio and then how we can work together to offer the best solution across Nokia phones, uh, innovative solutions, if, it, if it's going to be mobile TV, if it's going to be video, whatever it is, we want to bring that together and make the best solution for Nokia phones. Got it. Bernard. Hi, I'm uh, Bernard Gershon. I'm with uh, Disney ABC, the digital media group, and uh, we do fun things like put uh, content on iTunes. We created a channel for a mobile video, uh, ABC News channel, in 2003, uh, launched on mobile TV, and we're now uh, happy to be supplying probably it's publicly available numbers, well over 2 million subscribers with uh, on-demand and linear channels, video entertainment and uh, news information uh, content, and uh, audio content as well. Actually, yeah, I believe the statistics show that ABC is the number one when it comes to mobile TV. Mobile, excuse me, mobile TV. There was a survey from a company called Telefia or something? Mm -hmm. That's not right. It came out the second said quarter of this year. 40% of the mobile TV users are consuming ABC news content. Right. As much as I love a study like that, and as much as I'd love to have sort of, you know, NFL, Monday Night Football kind of ratings, uh, I think it's still early, and I don't know that there are tons of people watching the content. So we should just throw out all the statistics, right? Well, again, uh, I, I, I'm You're all number one. Statistics can end up biting you if they turn out bad. So I'm, I kind of take all statistics with a grain of salt. I'm thrilled when the statistics say we're the leader in the category, okay. and uh, I'm also less than thrilled when they say we're not. Well, that's good then, because Michael, if we're not using statistics. Media flow comes out on top, right? That's right. It's also a media flow. Uh, it's also good because you haven't launched. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's nowhere to go but up. I'm Michael Boyd with uh, Media Flow USA. A, uh, I said this is statistically consistent. More people watch ABC News on Media Flow than any other piece of content. It's uh, good. Yeah. Uh, so I manage content licensing and consumer research for Media Flow. Media Flow is a, uh, like I said, a wholly owned subsidiary of Qualcomm, and we're launching a nationwide network to broadcast. Um, mobile television channels to cell phones. We've announced a launch partner with uh, Verizon. Which was August, right? We were supposed to launch? Uh, we had we were scheduled to launch in October. We said we would be ready. Um, we Last week we got approval from the FCC on authorizing the interference regulations in terms of how we're measured. Okay. Uh, and we're scheduled for a, a first quarter 07 launch. I feel like it's like NASA with you guys, like the space shuttle. It's supposed to launch. Oh, it's delayed. It's supposed to launch. But the firm date, you think, first quarter? Yes. Good. I'd like to see it. Mateo. Hi. Mateo Montan. I'm uh, Italian. So I'm the only not English native speaker here, so please forgive me. But you probably get this industry better than anyone, <laughs> right? I hope so. Uh, uh, I work with Bonjour. Bonjour is one of the first uh, group uh, uh, worldwide in uh, mobile value added services. Uh, it's, uh, it's been founded in Italy, but now it's an international company. We are in around uh, 60 different countries, and basically we aggregate, produce, and distribute uh, mobile uh, content-based services uh, through different distribution channels, both with our own brand, which is Blinko, that is quite popular here in the U.S., uh, working with carriers or working with media companies. 
uh, in the company, I'm leading the um, global product team, so the teams are taking care of uh, uh, product development and product rollout across all the different jobs. Good morning, I'm Mike Arrieta. I uh, run the digital distribution of mobile businesses at Sunny Pictures uh, in the North American marketplace, uh, primarily trying to extend kind of our library and creating new products, games, video services, new branded channels, et cetera, across all platforms, be they PCs, uh, portable devices, and, and especially mobile devices. So um, you know, we've been very active in long form content for mobile. Um, we are long form. Um, primary uh, distribution of full-length feature films on mobile, on mobile, um, both in flash package media form um, as well as over the air. Uh, we're, as we'll talk about, very big believers in uh, the medium as an entertainment destination. I um, think it's great that people today are using mobile for news, weather, sports, you know, clips, and, and such. Just as we all used to use uh, our PCs for that. Um, we actually foresee uh, a world where screens are bigger, delivery systems such as Flow come in that, that increase the, the quality of the experience, and we see a, a shift over time that people will be watching full-length movies and TV shows as the primary uh, source of entertainment. Mike, I'm a bit perplexed on Sony because you have Sony Ericsson and then you have Sony. What handset do you have with you right now? Um, I have both a Sony Ericsson and a Nokia handset, and uh, a <laughs> Black so I. Uh, and I have a Motorola in my bag, and uh, <laughs> so, so I'm an equal opportunity player. What, what is the relationship between the Sony Studio side as well as the Sony Ericsson side? Uh, it's similar to kind of what the relationships are with all the Sony uh, verticals and uh, content. Discombobulated. Slightly. Um, you know, we try, what we try to do uh, as a content company and as inside of Sony is um, be smart about technology. So really, we don't always uh, try to solely leverage our content for the benefit of a particular device, but rather we try to optimize our content and services that <laughs> will help us move forward our device strategy, but you really can't do that in a vacuum. You, know, you really have to be smart about where platforms are going, and in certain cases, for instance, the Nokia platform uh, was ahead of the Sony Ericsson platform in terms of the ability to play full-length movies. Actually, it still is in some regards. So we are, and we've been working very closely with Nokia about making full-length movies available on those handsets. We've recently done a program uh, where we put out full-length movies on flash memory on Sony Ericsson, though that program trailed the program with Nokia. So it's all about being smart about platforms, and then to the extent we can use content to advantage our Sony sister companies, well, that's just all the better. False. Hi, I'm uh, Paul Napiano. I'm the Senior Director of Content Programming at, at Mobile. Uh, basically, I, I uh, manage the EP teams at Ant uh, to program entertainment, sports, life, uh, lifestyle, news, uh, and games content uh, onto our deck. Uh, interesting being here because basically mobile video is about 55% of our, our current revenue. Um, a large majority of our uh, subscribers, uh, which are 100% 3G, 18 to 25 demographic, um, are consuming uh, video and subscriptions uh, monthly uh, in large amounts. Um, so we're, we're interested in, in pushing the industry forward in, in mobile TV. How did you feel when uh, ESPN went down? Were you celebrating or were you... No, 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 not celebrating at all. I mean, we're, we're all competitors, but at the same time we're, we're, we're partners in, in expanding the MBNO and, and the, the concept of, of pushing content forward or content first um, carriers. So Yeah, I like a little. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, but no, no, it was, it was, it was, it was uh, unfortunate. Tell me, if I wanted to become an NGNL, mobile virtual network operator, what bells and whistles do I need to survive in that space? Because ESPN obviously didn't have it. What do you need? Um, I think you need content that speaks to uh, a wide variety um, of, your, of your target demo. Uh, sports is certainly a large part of our, of our business, but we also have entertainment with TV and movies. Um, you know, games is a huge part of our, our business. Uh, if, you have, if you don't have you know, customization content that speaks to everyone, um, then I think you're losing a large part of the market. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. How many subs does Amp have? How many subs you guys got? We're Thank approaching 150 by year end. How many? 150,000 by year end. 150,000 by year end. And how much money is going in your company so far? Do you see money? Uh, under 100 million? 
That's a pretty expensive cost per acquisition, isn't it? Uh, well, the data art food numbers are, are number one in terms of uh, industry usage. So we're at about $34 data, data art food per user. Okay. Hey, Bernie, what do you think about Bernie? Bernard. Bernard. Uh, whatever you like. Bernie. Call me Ken. <laughs> what, do, what do you think about a, uh, MBNO, an Apple MBNO? Do you think uh, an iTunes phone, a real iTunes phone, not like Motorola try to squeak out, but like a real Apple MBNO would work? I would say I'm definitely not an expert on MVNOs. And I would say that of sort of the MVNOs that are out there, I actually would have argued a year and a half ago and would have actually believed that the ESPN MVNO would have done really well. It was a, a nice no. handset. Well, you're saying Perhaps a little, Disney. no, it was, but I had the handset, it was nice, a little expensive, but sort of had great content on it, good video content, working to have more video content. So, uh, if you didn't have a Disney card, would you really say that? I would. Wow. I, I, would. I also like the Ampton and the Helio handsets. I think they're really nice handsets. I, I'm, I, at this point, I think the whole model is challenged. And I think the, the ultimately the people who are going to win in the space are the primary three carriers who are winning today. So, Trace, since you're sitting on the outside as a handset manufacturer, and the reason why I'm touching on MVNOs is they're the ones that are looking at the next generation content saying, hey, it's going to be mobile video, it's going to be you know, next generation messaging. What do you, what's your aspect and what do you think on the MVNO side? Do you think Amazon's got going to make it? Well, the reason why ESPN didn't make it is simply because, A, they charge too much for their handset, you know, 149 bucks to 200 bucks for a handset. With content you can easily find elsewhere on the web or you know, website that has that information. No one's going to pay a monthly fee up to 50 bucks for that. Well, well let's ask. Who here had ESPN? Oh, oh. I, I guess you're right. Yeah. You're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably had subsidized at work, right? Uh, it was free. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't recall. <laughs> <laughs> but what they really need to focus on is, you know, there is a price point out there. America is very you know, price sensitive. If you ratchet down the what you want in terms of voice minutes and even content or even unlimited data plan, plan so you have unlimited, unlimited data plans that are coming into, or are coming into Europe right now, but also been in the US the last two to three years. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that is kind of, I think will be successful is the actual Disney mobile for the kids, because that is a niche. Because that's something that actual parents want. They want to be able to track their, their kids with them. Content, right. Mateo, what kind of content do you watch on your phone? Sorry? What kind of content do you watch on your phone? Show me your hands up. Let me see your hands up. What do you have? Nokia. You have a Nokia? What do you watch on that? Uh, in terms of video, I watch uh, mainly entertaining stuff. Like okay, well now narrow it down a little more. Okay. What do you watch? Uh, How much adult content do you watch on it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're Italian. I'm not going to watch something. I I guess I watch uh, <laughs> other content but only for me. Only for business. Okay. <laughs> No, the reason why I bring this up no, is because I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I, I know where you are going to. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, other content is mainly driving consumption in Europe or video. Right, you can't do it here in the States. Well, you can, but it's very hard to build inside. Yeah. But in Europe, it seems to be explosive. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, lucky enough, it's not only other content. I mean, um, in most of the market that we cover with uh, uh, running. Um, Video services, I would say adult is uh, number one. And adult is number one. I'm talking of uh, services uh, uh, on, uh, on that. So basically, services that we run on behalf of Vodafone or Orange. Is number one. Yeah. Adult. Yeah. Just because you can't get it anywhere else? I mean, why, why on a mobile phone? So, no, I'm being serious. What? You know, I'm looking. Who here uh, Why not is in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at this is the uh, N93. Have you ever seen this? This is a Nokia. It's a big phone, but if you look at the screen size, it's bigger than my iPod. And I spent maybe $150 a month, and obviously we're on the high end of the long tail. $150 on the content of the month is what I watch video. So I get. My Jericho, my 60 seconds, or 60 to 16 seconds, I download all that, pay for it. And obviously, it's, it's done very, very well, but the handset size is good. Now, when you start going to, that's too big. Let's see a standard handset. See, now you guys get standard. Even that's, that's fairly big. See, those are all big. We are not the average consumer, obviously. Yeah, it's big, too. Look at the size of that. That's the size. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Because we're looking at the size of the handsets are, are getting bigger. Is it getting the screens are getting bigger to accommodate that content? Is that the direction to go? Yeah, the, the, the added thing you're talking about, that answer right there, actually has video output to your television. And it does. So, you know, not only is the screen getting bigger for people on the go, but now you're getting, you know, removable memory, as I mentioned, that uh, is getting larger and cheaper, which can play back media. You also have handsets with internal storage, and you've got handsets with up to four gigs of internal storage today. Actually, there's more. I mean, you know, N95 came out before this. And you know what's interesting is what they've done with the phones to make it more accommodating to watch video. You know, obviously we look at our phone this way. They've turned them on the side so it actually sits as an area to watch it more accommodating. It's not just Nokia. No, Motorola's doing the same thing. Sony Ericsson, everyone's rolling it out to make the phone sit like, a, actually better than the iPod is the goal. But the problem is the iPod and Apple, and Bernie, you're proud to be over there. Have you met Steve Jobs yet? I haven't met Steve. No, I know he's an excellent. It's all about content. I get a free weekend at Disney World for that. Do you really? No. no. It's all about content. You guys obviously well, it's, it's, about, it's about content, it's about great marketing, it's about a great product, it's a great user interface. I mean, iTunes is not only, I mean, the iPod the video, if you play with it, it's not only a good experience, it's a nice product. I mean, Creative Labs came out with something that you could. Zen. To the Zen, you could do that kind of thing with it a year or two before, but the product was terrible, it was marketed badly, and it was impossible to download content. Okay, now let's be realistic. Is it really about the content? Is it really about the marketing? Or is it about the network? Michael, here in the United States, the existing network, the legacy system, can't really even handle the video content properly, can it? It, it doesn't really scale. The unicast networks don't really scale, and that's what they found in Korea when they launched the media four or five years ago. So we had, you know, Qualcomm had to look at different ways of delivering video, and I think that the, the broad, you know, broadcast is an enabler, it's a different way of delivering technology, but from the consumer perspective, we still believe it's all about the content. Well, give me an example when you say it's all about the content. What unique content are you going after that you're going to show off first quarter of next year that I can't get anywhere else? I could get ESPN all out. Uh, at the moment, on a mobile phone, you cannot get a full episode of Lost. But I can get it on my iPod. I can get it on TV. I can get it on my TiVo. Give me something that's unique. I mean, let's face it. Amp has got unique stuff. I don't know. They do. Yeah, I mean, we're we're all about original programming. How's that? How's that doing for you? Obviously, you're not leaving Disney to go work for Amp, right? So, but it's original content. Talk about some of the content. You need a certain demo with your content. Absolutely. Um, you know, Little Bush is one of our original uh, content pieces that we created. It's an animation um, from the creator, um, Donna Carey, who was one of the writers for The Simpsons. Um, you know, original programming in our deck is represents maybe 8% of what we have, but right now it's about 30% of our, of our content revenues. Um, so it's doing very well. And that's with equal footing on all the promotions and deck placement. So if it's content that's going to drive it, and not just the network, because I think you kind of need the network. You, I remember the streaming media conference back in, oh, I think it was 1999 at Earl's Court in the UK. We were all arguing regarding what is broadband content, and somebody said, oh, it's 300K. 300K is broadband video content. And it's, it's like the same story when we come to mobile right now. First, can the network even handle 200K, 56K, 300K content? And am I compelled to sit in an environment where my signal coverage is strong enough to receive it, or do I have to download it on my phone? I mean, it seems like there's so many things that are out there that aren't coming together. Trent? So I think if we kind of like sidestep the networks and look at what is next, and hands is actually in the market today, which is Wi-Fi. Um, all these E70, E60, One Europe, you know, N93, N95, all coming from Nokia. High-end handsets have Wi-Fi enabled capability. And you know, is it one day where an operator will actually offer a Wi-Fi package it alongside a cellular network well, package. Mobile's working on that. Aspect. So it makes sense. They understand that their network can't handle the bandwidth. Um, Nokia just recently launched the Wi-Fi Parks project in New York. We've actually given away free Wi-Fi to anyone that walks into a park in New York for two years, and they can get compelling content, whether it be video, radio, or images. It's actually free. So it's a central park. You have to highlight that it's central park. You guys want to Maybe it'll be coming to other regions, but it is coming. So. But let's think about this. So if we are going on a hot uh, Wi-Fi direction, why would a carrier want to subsidize? I'll always perplex this. 
Why would a carrier want to subsidize a Wi-Fi phone that could do SIP phone calls? So data being the data that they would generally sell the bits and bytes through their cellular network would be going through the Wi-Fi network. Wouldn't that encroach on their revenue opportunity, Michael? Why, why would I want to do that? Well, I think you got to you look more broadly. If you look at companies like Sprint or Verizon or others, I mean, they're, they're, in, they're in an access business. Right. They've got DSL, they've got fiber at home, they've got you know over-the-air mobile services. I mean, it's all about connectivity and, and triple plays and beyond. So ultimately, they're trying to capture your entire wallet in multiple ways. The, the delivery path into a mobile device you know, today is you know basically like a well dial-up, right? So we we all can see a trailer, we can see a clip, and. You know, it's about kind of a new experience, not necessarily the content, the uniqueness of the content, but more or less a new destination, a new place where you're seeing it. But then the, the, the delivery paths are going to improve. Flow comes, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, y to come in. You get, now you get ubiquitous connectivity into that device with a bigger screen, output to the TV. You have people like functionality where you can store things. Samsung and others already have that functionality. So now you, you're shifting away from um, the current world that we're looking at where we're saying, well, it would be great if we have a broadcast technology, which I can't wait for flow because it actually enables high quality video. I think it's fabulous. But that's just the next step and what will be a series of steps to what ultimately is entertainment on the go. When you say you can't wait for media flow, I'm assuming you mean media flow when you say flow. Yeah. Is it because you just don't want to deal with the carriers? No, no. Is it because you want to deal with a different network? I mean, why can't you wait for it? Because I want a higher capacity uh, data channel. I want the ability for people to get high quality sure. entertainment. But we need new phones for that too. Sure. So you want to go out and literally get everybody to upgrade their phones, which you're really asking for also. Yeah. I mean, I think over time, yes. I mean, people are upgrading like their people. Have <laughs> Yeah, people have upgraded their PCs over time based on new services that have come in. Uh, same thing is happening. And if you think of how online gaming has started, you had you know very that lo low processors, small graphics chips, and now you've got higher end PCs to take advantage of next generation gaming. Same thing with video services, bigger hard drives, more RAM, dual core processing, all these crazy things on, on PCs. All of those types of shifts need to happen in the mobile business as well. What's so, the perfect phone, Mateo? What do, you, what do we need to really consume this content? What would be the pocket phone to consume video the right way? Bigger screen, hard drive, Wi-Fi, what network, CDMA, GSM, is it flow? What do you, what do you think? I mean, I can tell you what's happening right now in Europe. That's funny. BT is number one right now, I believe, in Europe, right, when it comes to mobile video. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you need to, to look at Europe as, a, I mean, at least for 3G, uh, uh, still a uh, more high-end market. Why, I mean, in other things is not so much. So right, much right. Time, uh, with, uh, compared to the U.S. Uh, now, uh, in countries like uh, U.K., uh, more than 10% of the 3G users are heavily using uh, uh, video services. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, the, the way they use is, I mean, very different from how they watch video on the internet. So they watch for a few minutes per day, maximum 30 minutes per month. Uh, but let's say that spending a lot of money for, on that. Uh, what's, what's this is, I, I'm, trying, I'm answering to your question, why on mobile and not on iPhone? Because, uh, I mean, the format for mobile could be based on this completely different behavior of the user. If he wants to see short clip uh, and then uh, only for a few minutes uh, during the day. So there is a, uh, still a lot of room for made for mobile content. Meaning There's a lot of opportunity because yeah. it has to be defined, is what you're saying. Yeah. Bernie, what is this? Is it a three minute clip? Is it a four minute? Is it doing a full movie like Sony? What is that? Is it like the internet audience? Short attention span theater? I want the information well, now. We, we, you really talked about sort of the experience today. Um, yeah. what we, um, what we both have probably together, uh, I'm not sure the publicly available numbers, but it's got to be well over 2 million subscribers, people looking at, in the case of Movie TV, ABC News Channel, and other channels, about a bundle of 20 channels of content. Uh, and people enjoy the service and they watch for three to five minutes. That's on average. Around the right but, number, but three to five. No, I didn't say that's the right number. I said that's what people are doing today because the experience is in the sort of eight to 10 frames a second range. It's not nearly as good as the 30 frames a second that you probably get, or 20 minutes. 30 frames a second that you probably get with, uh, with media flow. Mm -hmm. But the experience today is habituating users and saying video content, high quality video content is actually available on the phone. 
and people are starting to consume it, and as the quality gets better, whether it's flow or whether it's the network's improving or whether it's Wi-Fi or whatever, is sort of our feeling is people will look at high quality content, and I think they will look at full length motion pictures, they will look at full length TV programs, perhaps chaptered, so that somebody can watch the first six minutes, six or seven minutes, take a break, you know, do whatever, go to a meeting, watch the rest of the program, and news updates throughout the day. I want media for that. <laughs> Amazing, because it's almost like, you know, the next you Star Wars. For that? I can't, no, the reason why is because we all talk about how the legacy networks are, aren't providing what we need, because either the handsets are right that they're subsidizing, or you can't get the bandwidth. So we constantly hear media flow is going to do this, this, and this. And it better be like a great movie coming out, because you hear, oh, man, they got all these actors in it. It's got the best director. When it comes out, it's like, oh. You have to really live up to what you're saying. Now, how are you doing that? You've gone out there. Is it, what channel are you, HF? 53? 54. 54. 55. 55. 55. Okay. And that, across the country. That's right. Okay. And the handset, unfortunately, is only US-based. I mean, I can't go outside the United States with it, right? It's like a CDMA, a phone kind of, in some The way. first place we'll launch is in the United States, but there are several countries that are yeah. trialing meaningful technology. And some of those operators are looking at um, frequencies that are in that band because of the performance of that band and also for running capability. So they, there's, a, there's a movement to, to head in that direction. So when I turn this new phone on, starting next year, the first quarter of next year, right? Because you're still going to do a couple more panels talking about what we're going to be. Four, <laughs> you're four playing it. So when we get there and we turn it on, I'm going to be able to see what kind of content. Have you already done licensing deals? We are in the middle of licensing deals. We've closed some of those deals. We have not announced those deals. And Why you see here's the comment is that no, the one in the back. it oh. will, uh, <laughs> and the content will be both familiar and unexpected or surprising. Well, if you look at the audience, we think our early adopter audience is people who are passionate about the cell phone. So why cell phone versus iPod? <coughs> when you walk out the door, it's keys, wallet, and cell phone. That's what you walk out with. And so it's always with you. It's a part of who you are. And there's 200 million people in the U.S. that depend on cellular communications. The other, the other element is there's a number of millions of people who have digital cable and satellite who are addicted to video programming. They are passionate about video programming. And so that's the intersection of those two circles, people who are passionate about video programming. Listen, just because you've got television on your phone, if you're a free-to-air customer home, you're not on a television phone. This is for people, but we believe that audience is roughly 40 million people. If you do the intersection of 200 million people, right the passion of, about cell phone, and the number of digital cable and satellite robot, uh, subscribers, it's a large number. Okay. So, so the mechanism is through an operator, and, and what we think will happen is, if you look at the viewership, the shows you mentioned are primetime television shows. Right. So live sports, we expect live sports to be there. We expect primetime television to be there. We expect it to be day party. The difference is live news. Live news. Live news. And music, music videos, obviously, too. Music is important. All the elements of programming are, are important. And the good news is our, our research has indicated it's not a male-dominated, testosterone-driven Audience it is both 50, it's 49 percent female and 51 percent male. It's about as easily as you get. The difference is they each want different content. Mm -hmm. One thing that needs to happen is operators in the U.S. actually need to you know, let go of control and stop trying to mandate that this is the handset you're going to have and you should like it. If you go overseas, 50 percent of Nokia's handset sales, even greater in Asia Pacific, are actually sold through an independent channel through a car phone warehouse. And you guys do almost 60 percent of your sales off carrier, correct? So you know, go to your car phone warehouse, what you do is get your SIM from Vodafone, T-Mobile, put it into your device that you want, and you go and use the service. But in the US, it's, I gotta get this crappy E62, which is a great phone, by the way. In, in the US, and it's got no Wi-Fi, it's got less memory, it's got less of a processor, but because they carry one, it's a ratchet down the cost because they can't support their network. So that thing needs to change, and obviously we want to do something about that to get more market share as well. We're, we have off that contact we do. On panel, off panel, Dave Palmer, <coughs> back in, way back there, with Motorola, he was one of the guys that's head of iRadio. Now, you're on the audio side, watching the video side. And the problem is, audio really hasn't even picked up yet. How do you think video is going to pick up? Because you're, you're putting a lot of effort into audio. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think it's just a natural progression. Like, you better stand for the camera, because they hate us now, because 
<laughs> the, the voice in the back. Uh, I mean, clearly, audio is a real straightforward application for our mobile phone. It's built as an audio application, an audio device. From square one, it's got a speaker, it's got a microphone, it has, has the ability to handle audio. Video is a newer phenomenon. But audio, how's it doing? But, well, audio. Audio on your phone. Started off with these goofy little sounds that these things could make, so you could, when the phone rang, you got the. And people thought that was cool and they paid money for it. You know, and it's evolved into where now we can actually, the phones have been upgraded to match the demand. People want to listen to people listening to audio on the phone. They're absolutely listening to audio on the phone. People are downloading millions of ringtones. They're ringtones, obviously. So ringtones turned into a multi billion dollar business and now created this opportunity to sell full track downloads, to play radio on a phone, and people are doing it. So, what's your numbers over at Motorola when it comes to audio on a mobile phone? I'm talking about. Radio content, I'm talking about you know, interviews and all that. What do you think? What's the music? Uh, you know, Come on, you got some internal numbers. I, I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think, Dave? Uh, I think what I can answer politically correct is that um, we think it's extremely important for the mobile phone <clears throat> business to fully support audio and music and to perpetuate it and propel it, just like Nokia is doing and Sony Ericsson is doing. Consumers are coming to ask for it. You see phones being purchased because they have music capability. Okay, let's not be politically correct. If I had $100 million to invest into a company, what I want to do, a mobile video company or a mobile audio company? You know, Ken, I don't know what the distinction is really, other than it's just, it's all media. Yeah. No, that's not politically correct. I think the point is that, that people are willing to consume content. They're consuming it on an iPod, both video and audio. Okay. So we can on phone, both video and audio. Not really, for us, it's a natural, um, a natural evolution that we're supporting both. Got it. Thank you, Dave. Can, can, can I make a comment? We found in our consideration, audio, audio contributes significantly to a consumer's perception of the value of video. In other words, the flying an airplane, if you've ever watched a movie, even if the picture's crap, you might still watch it because you can hear it. But if the audio is crap, you, you won't even watch it. So there is an important element of audio even in the video. Okay, but now let's go back to the idea of the airplane. I can watch a movie, Lost, TV shows, I mean, on my iPod, on a plane because it's downloaded, it's sitting there. When we're talking about mobile video, in most cases we're talking about it being streamed to the handset, not cached in any way. Right, Michael? Yeah, but I mean, you're, making a, you're kind of making a distinction about the iPod today, seven years into the evolution of broadband delivery content. So, you know, in seven years from now, you'll be watching probably far more on a mobile device than you will even on your PC. Well, I have to wait seven years? Well, it'll happen faster because there's a lot more Mobile media flow better be out by then. Right, but there'll be a lot more investment and more, uh, a more rapid progression of technology that probably took broadband seven plus, maybe even 10 years to get to where we are, where you can actually watch stuff on your on your iPod and your PC like you can today, that same time frame will probably happen in two to three years on the mobile. On the mobile side, which makes it really great is obviously the trackability. You're, you're able to see where this content is going because there's an individual that's asking for it. On, on an iPod, actually, where's the problem is trackability. It's hard to see if somebody actually has listened or viewed it through the whole duration. MP3 files are unsecure, a lot of these issues. Bernie, what's nice about the mobile video side is the full trackability. How are you doing on those numbers on tracking? Are you utilizing that in any way other than, hey, wow, they're listening, they're watching content? Or are you actually targeting advertising to somebody that has a, a Nokia phone, a high Nokia phone, or a Motorola phone? Are you utilizing any of that? I would say we're still very early, and the numbers, or the actual daily usage numbers, are relatively small. I mean, certainly over the course of the next two to five years, certainly by seven years. Uh, there will be a, a, an audience for uh, video advertising on mobile devices. Just like today, there's a, there's a fairly substantial audience for WAP advertising. It's not terribly exciting, but there are millions of pages of, uh, of WAP content that's viewed, particularly news and sports, and it's a good advertising opportunity and a good way to target that advertising. Uh, video, we are serving video ads in our, in our product, in our linear news channel, but to say that we're generating significant additional revenue out of it would be an overstatement. Paul, on the aspect of content itself, subscription based for all you need type content or per clip, you know, 99 cents for this clip, different pricing, which is, which one works? Um, it's actually a combination of both. So I'd say a large majority, maybe three-fourths, 
uh, are subscribed to a video pack such as MTV, which is a combination of linear programming. Um, and then there's, there's an all the part clips with certain providers that the people are interested in seeing, like the behind the scenes extras and things like that. So the full episodes and, and things of that nature are on the linear programming side. And then when people want to go down to the, to the deeper side and talk against the interviews of the actors and, and, and the writers and things like that, then they go down to the, the VOD all the part clips. Show me your phone, Paul. Pull something up on it. Oh, is that You want to see how fast it's TV? I want to hear what, what it looks like, or see what it looks like, too. So just to, I would say that actually content needs to be free and advertising based, just simply because the more you charge for it, the less people are going to actually engage with it. As soon as you actually make it free and support of advertising, definitely in the American market, because people don't mind watching ads, because so look at TV, look at Virgin Mobile, they're putting in, watch this clip, you get some money, create it onto your account. So everything go forward, you know, Google's going to come out with a product, and it's going to be free, Yahoo's going to do it, so why not keep doing this for everything else? It makes sense. Is it free bird? Yeah. Sorry. But it is like that when you're doing the advertising spots, and a lot of, like your ABC News and all that, that's all ad sponsored. <coughs> what? That's not free? It's free for the consumer to watch with the ads inside it, correct? Uh, do that now? On the desktop. I'm sorry? On the desktop is free, on the mobile side is completely not free, right? It depends on the content and it depends on a lot of pieces, but it, if you, yes. There you go, that's what you would say. I'm just going to tell you something, you just put up apparently. <laughs> so as we look at this, is that is that acceptable to you, Bernie? Oh, yeah, I have her number. <laughs> but is that acceptable in the sense of first? I can't believe you put this up. But people want. No, but as we're looking at that right there, how, how did I get that? Was it a monthly subscription? Yep. And what's something like that cost? Uh, it's ten dollars to join App TV. So it's part of our linear programming package. We have twenty-seven channels slotted right now that are full twenty-four-seven. Correct. Can you give me an idea how many streams or pieces of content are downloaded or watched on a daily basis? Uh, per month, we're looking at about 200,000 plus. 200,000 plus on the 120,000 subs? Uh, by your percent, yeah. 200,000 a month? 200,000, yeah. 200,000 plays a video a month? 200,000 video streams, yeah. Collaborate. You and AMS, something's happening. No, I, I think that those numbers are small compared to what's happening on VCAST. My guess is they're probably getting 10x. But they have more more assets that are grabbing that content yeah. also. Yeah. And the VCast, who's that VCast? Do you watch VCast a lot? From time to time? What's, why aren't you watching it all the time? Because he's here. <laughs> so when, when you have no TV or computer. What are you watching on the VCast? What content? Excellent. <laughs> this man and I have never met. <laughs> it's actually interesting to find number two according to this recent say I look at for second quarter is weather. Weather channel was right up there, like number two. Yes. Followed by it's French. Sprint. It's French. It's fresh. And that, actually I was with a friend of mine this morning. He says, Well, living in California, really don't watch the weather, it's what it is. But obviously in other parts of the United States you have different weather here. It's the same. But, but I think that goes to what Michael was talking about, is if you don't have a high quality experience, most programmers are not going to put their best assets. I like to use the example that Disney doesn't want you to have a bad Winnie the Pooh experience. So <laughs> news and weather, but that, because that tarnishes their brand. That was the video you just showed me. Yeah. That yeah. was Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Yeah. I need to have the cameraman stop. <laughs> No, but you're right. You want to at least test the market and from there move it. Now, how are you guys doing with James Bond? Obviously, that's a big marquee brand that comes out very, very soon. You're going after the, the rights globally to get James Bond content out of mobile phones. Yep. And that's going to be a big push, right? Oh, sure. Absolutely. It's a huge movie. Uh, great brand. Tell us about that brand and mobile video environment. So we're, uh, you know, we, we, for our, all of our future properties that are, you know, Bond desk. We try to put a whole range of mobile content out there for the consumer. Everything from wallpapers, screensavers, voice tones, video clips, you know, the whole nine. And, uh, and, and of course, games as well. We have a series of games coming out. And it basically rounds out, you know, something for the Bond enthusiasts, anything they want. It could be gadgets, it could be pictures of the girls, it could be lines for Bond, it could be, you know, clips from the movies. And, and we put them out on you know, essentially every carrier around the globe, and we round it out with a number of games, and it's very high end. Anytime you have a property that's like a Spider-Man or a Bond, you know, there's a lot of 
know, people who really uh, associate with us. Who's gravitating towards this more than any other countries? Um, the UK and, uh, and Italy and uh, are kind of our big markets. Um, uh, UK for bond, obviously. But uh, where, where I'm most interested in what's been happening from a, from a media consumption is in Italy, where you've got, we have a big deal with three. Uh, they've got a full UMTS deployment. They're the first full DB, DBBH deployment. Beautiful video going out there. First in the world to do video on demand on the phone with us, um, which has been going really well. They have a lot of game Marpu. Actually, their games actually outsell adult. Um, oddly enough, probably the only place in the entire world on I mean platform. Uh, that does that, but you know we're really excited about people who are investing in the network. So there they did a full UMTS appointment. Got They're it. the first to do that. Great network. The higher the network, it's just like everybody with their PC. You get broadband, you spend more, you do more. Same thing with mobile. You get higher speed connectivity, you're going to do more. So if you have just your traditional, you know, early days bad handset, you're not going to download a lot of ringtones. You get a higher speed connection, you download more ringtones, watch more video clips, play more games. But the standardization was really important. Uh, Nokia and Motorola got together on uh, DBBH. And that was probably one of the first steps saying, hey, let's standardize on something. How is that going? The, the standardization is going. Actually, it used to be with Macromedia Correct. on the Flash side and all that. Mm -hmm. And Flash has just muscled itself in on the internet, being the predominant. It's installed on like 92% of all browsers, I believe. I mean, yeah, so I, mean, I mean, YouTube and all that, that's all Flash based. So that's nice. Yeah. It works. On the mobile video side, standardization was a bit tough. Is it real? Is it what player is it going to work in? What network is it going to work in? That, that still hasn't really been settled yet, has it? It's getting there. If you kind of look back to, you know, if you look at it from a Nokia perspective in terms of how we're progressing forward, um, a year and a half ago, you would have said who's going to be the largest camera manufacturer in the world, and everyone would have said, you know, Nikon or somebody else. But today, it's actually Nokia. So you know, look another year and a half forward, who's going to be the largest video manufacturer, video player manufacturer? Actually, the Razer is number one right now on one and a half. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motorola is on uh, video camera phones is right now three. In America, but globally, oh, it is, right. yeah, we have 36% market share globally. So I'm talking a global picture. Um, but we, when you look at the video player, definitely that's our, game, our sort of goal is to be number one there as well. If you look at mobile TV, we see by like 2009, uh, roughly the same amount of people watching TV, watching TV on their mobile phone as well. It's something like 155. Seriously? So that's definitely the goal we see going forward. It's, it's a good goal, it's gonna be there, the capability's gonna be there, it's just a matter of how do we educate consumers to actually upgrade their phones. In the US it's two to two and a half years, but in overseas, most in Asia Pacific, they never see a PC, their phone is their PC. And but it's unfortunate that we use the Asian, saying Korea, Japan, and look what's going on over there, and try to apply those numbers to what's going on with us. We can't. It's a right. totally different type of environment. Right? Yes, I agree. And definitely, if you look at like Japan, definitely can't use that model because it's owned by a different infrastructure. Carriers basically mandate it. Handset manufacturers are sort of lame to actually those carriers and going forward. In the U.S. is completely opposite way. Content companies kind of bow towards the the media the carriers. And what we need to look at is how do we open that market up so consumers have three much choice. Let's, which grab, we need. let's grab a couple of questions. Tell me your name and your company and what's your question. Stand up when you do that, please. My name's Alan Mosdow. I'm with TVandCars.com where you can hear free TV through any car's existing sound system. Cool. Uh, the question I have is, does battery life, uh, is that a blanket over a user's access to television video over cell phones? Is that a factor at all? I remember this one guy showing me this great video phone. And he goes, oh, this video, look at this guy, I'm looking at it, it's great. He goes, I'll send you my handset. I go, great, how much? It was 20 bucks. 20 bucks for the handset. Gave him 20 bucks, and I ran away with the handset. He goes, well, wait a second, you're the batteries. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, battery life. We think battery life is critical in, in we, we talked about the standardization process. We've submitted media flow to the standards body from the standardization process. And, if you're familiar with Qualcomm, you know, our chip group will have support both DVBH and Flow. So, you know, I don't think that this is not necessarily a religious war. Wherever, you know, we can sell chips and, and operators want solutions, we'll deliver those solutions to them. But let's, let's focus on battery life. That was so the, the, the point is that when we developed Flow, that was one of the particular reasons we decided to develop Flow. We were concerned about DVBH being based on the terrestrial standard. We were worried about battery life. So 
our design methodology has been we want the battery, we want you to be able to watch video for the same amount of time you can talk on the phone. Is that realistic? Yes. I mean, really, the battery isn't absorbed with video time as well as talk time? Even using a 3 gig network that's browsing the web, you know, maybe an hour and a half, two hours to get on battery life. Well, that's because you're running the transmitter with a 3G network. With well, a broadcast right. network, you only have a receiver. But still, the biggest thing is actually the screen being lit up. That's the biggest threat. That's, that's the biggest I think the, the, the uh, biggest problem to be solved is finding chargers that are compatible. Yeah. That is the most annoying. <laughs> so if like, one person here has a charger, chances are no one else can use it. On the app side, once you start consuming the video, it just kills the battery, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's just like every other phone. Yeah, is there any solution around that yet? We have to wait for fuel cells. Oh, we're also looking at video flow and DVBH as well, so. And that will cut it down. Okay, another question, actually right back there. Gentlemen, sir? Uh, yeah. yeah, Geller, what counts? Um, are the carriers and the handset manufacturers threatened by flash? I mean, users, I think, would embrace more flash on phones, but as you said, we see it on very few phones. That's interesting. I mean, it's on all of your phones, I believe, on Nokia. Yes. So Flash, actually, we signed a license to deal with Macromedia, which is now Adobe, about almost two years ago now. So every Series 60 phone that goes into the market, and now all Series 40 phones that are capable, actually have Flash Lite shipping on it. So we're definitely committed to that standard and are trying to enable developers to embrace it, bring content to that market. So yes, it's there. The biggest problem is what is that channel for developers to get to market? If you look at the internet, it's really, you post it, it's free, it's advertising revenue. On mobile, it's how do we enable the carriers to actually sell the content into that market and enable that channel? Is it through a Jamba or is it through somebody else? If you look at the Qualcomm side of things with Verizon, obviously they have more of an Indian solution. You can put that directly into that. And I believe today they announced that Flash is supported within the Verizon VCAS solution. So that's a great thing for developers and Flash over there. I'll see. Makes sense. You want to see the Sony side? Um, I know you represent content and it looks like the, the handsets in some ways too. How's Flash? I mean, you know, anything you know, where you have some sort of standardization, we love it. I mean, some, some of the elements of the Flash in our presentation layer you know, excite us because the deck is a, is a hard place to find content. Um, you know, it's, it's not, it, there's limitations in the hardware that there's certain, certain elements in Flash presentation layers are now making it easier for discovery. So we like that, and then of course for forms of media playback, just like the internet uh, has you know, kind of some standardization around flash as a, as a format for delivery, any sort of standardization for go across the answers makes it easier to deliver content. It was awesome. You know, I really, during the dot-com days, one of the survivors there, we worked on those four C's, which is funny because it was old as new again. Content, community, communication, and commerce. Those were the four C's, and they worked. If your website did the four C's, great, you'll be the eBay or Amazon. And that as things transform, we're back to the four C's. We're now at the four M's. It's movement, management, management, monetization, and the most important is measurements. So once you move the person by using an email or a batter or something to move a person, you manage them once they're inside that site. You know, you get them to do something, click here, listen here, read this, whatever, and then you monetize that. You actually somehow make money for an advertiser or a subscription or whatever, and then you measure it. Now, it's interesting because, quite frankly, on the mobile side, it's probably the best device for measurement. It really is. <clears throat> Besides knowing the person on their building mechanism side, you know location. Location-based technology exists there. So I would assume that an advertiser would want to work on a mobile platform even more aggressively or to enhance a mobile platform than just a standard video portal because of that measurement side. Now, here's the question. How many big advertisers, a Procter & Gamble, have walked up to you saying, knock, knock, hey, let us help you build your mobile strategy? What's going on on the advertising side? I mean, there's a lot going on with that right now with, with advertising. We just launched uh, you know, P&G last, last month, actually so last week, uh, into our linear programming, and it's, and it's doing very well. Um, but have they helped build this out? And what are they asking for that have stepped you up to the plate even more, where you've actually done more for that? I mean, we're, we're looking at higher CPMs in general simply because we can provide back the data that they're looking for. We're speaking directly to the target demographics that they're, that they're reaching out what to. What are they asking for in demographics? What are they asking for on the actual viewer that is a little more unique than what an advertiser on the internet would look for? We're fortunate in the sense that we're, we're targeting the 18 to 25 core demo. Um, and in the case of P&G, you know, they wanted to, to really push their OS essence brand. 
uh, which is, is perfect for a miracle program because we have specific channels, specific, you know, targeting the female demographic. There's, you know, AMD, there's Bravo, there's, uh, there's WE, there's Oxygen. Um, so all of that is doing very well. Bernd? And certainly we've had interest in discussions with advertisers when we talk about sort of reaching 15 million people in one shot on a TV program like right. Lost or something else versus probably a couple thousand people who are watching, you know, a piece of a, a given video clip on a given day. So if you think about the CPM, that's pretty, it's not a lot of money. So, so at, today, certainly the mobile video advertising, big advertisers are interested in experimenting. It's far from being big money. I mean, certainly I'm sure people have talked to MediaFlow and said, hey, we'd love to experiment with you guys. We want to sort of study and learn people's reaction. Does it work for branding? Does it work to actually sell a product? The great thing about having a, having a device, as people have seen with ringtones, someone can click OK or buy and buy it right away, which is something you can't do on network television. If you, if you look at advertising the CPMs that people are getting right now, you're looking at 50 to 70 dollar CPM for a mobile advertising. Just because they're a captive audience, yeah, it's like going back. Times 100 people is still not a lot of money. But no, still, it's not. But that's pretty. It's scale. It's right. like going back to internet. No, no, I'm saying it's not to scale. I'm just saying it's it's kind of like broadband was five years ago. Exactly. Sort of the numbers small, the quality is still fairly crappy, but th there is definitely upside as far as. I, I would argue about the quality. The quality is actually pretty good on mobile devices. Come on, it's kind of crappy. Yeah, I agree. It is. It's Compared to high def. Um, we're probably going to start to see user-generated user content be more available, easier available on the cell phone. Um, how does that make you feel in far as of uh, premium content? And if ultimately it's a focus on getting the ad in there and making sure you get paid for your content, you worry about losing that audience to user-generated content will effectively make it available for free. So, so we, again, so in the, in the we're in favor of user-generated content in general. We have been using user-generated content for some time off phones and webcams. So the best recent example of a news story where users were part of the story and created content was the London subway bombing, where people who were underground were able to shoot. inside content that you're developing. It's not just somebody you know, saying yeah, you're a dot. Again, I, <coughs> correct. So, so for that piece, mm -hmm. it will be a piece overall of the content that you know, big media companies will want to create for mobile phones. The, the difficult part at the moment is uh, volume of clips that you can have on the phone and navigation. So the navigation today is much more difficult on a mobile device than it is by going to a Google or some other search page and saying, or YouTube's homepage and say, let me find the top 100 stupidest video clips. But, but that definitely will be an opportunity to do that. They want to get 20% of the country to pay for all you can pay, right? Like, that's what they want to do. So their goal is, okay, let's give you as many services as you can, convince everybody that that's worth spending an extra 40 bucks a month for. And, you know, with, you know, a lot of us get these emails, what are the most, you know, top viewed user-generated clips today? I don't know you And you can see, I mean, like, TV, uh, electronic media stuff, they send it out every day. And you can see it's not hard to put that as a menu on a cell phone. Like, okay, here's the top five YouTube, here's the top five. And I, I just wonder, again, it's a battle of free versus pay. Do you guys have to say, you know what, we have great content at ABC, we want to capture the audience, we have great content at Sony. Let's push the carriers to take down barriers more, you know, just so people can start catching those viewers. Otherwise, we don't want to see the market to user-generated content. Well, Michael answered that you go yeah, ahead. I, when it comes to user-generated content, you know, we love user-generated content. We just bought Grouper, which is a user-generated site. So, <laughs> yeah, well, I come to the territory. Um, but uh, basically, you know, the reason we bought that was we actually believe in content. We believe in, in the consumer being entertained. People do want all forms of entertainment. We actually launched a user-generated destination in, in 2001. So we were in it early. Um, and we're back in it kind of in a, in, a, in a fuller way. And ultimately, if you're a carrier, people are consuming lots of user-generated content. You just have to treat that as fact. So carriers are going to have to put user-generated content on the deck, right? Otherwise, you just don't have a credible entertainment offering. So we're trying to accelerate into that. So yes, we're going to offer people the ability to watch <coughs> user-generated content. We also want people to have the opportunity to watch our movies and television programming. But the reason we have both those assets is the intersection we're going to do in between. 
where you actually have user involved programming, where you actually, you, it's not just about us versus them, but rather the magic that can happen when you actually involve users in mashups and, and programming and bring them into the creative process. And that's something that we think will make more unique, made for mobile programming, made for the medium of programming, and that will hopefully be at the top of the deck. What I'm saying is uh, people on mobile are uh, open to pay uh, even for user-generated content. It's something different from, from the, the internet because clearly, I mean, the, the display so, is so tiny, the uh, discovery is so difficult, so there is an editorial and added value that a content provider, a service provider can add, meaning choosing the content for you or making some CRM on, on top of different uh, categories. Uh, and I mean, we see that people are open to, to pay for user-generated content that they, get, they can get for free over the internet. So, right? Is it based upon a ranking that you created? Same with exactly what you mentioned. You know, yeah. View today, I mean, post watch, post link to exactly. It could be. I mean, I, more, I mean, of course, it could be if you're, I mean, to make the uh, to rank uh, the top five Google uh, mm, YouTube stuff. Of course, you need to be. Uh, if you want to look at what you do that. So there are several ways to do it. You can partner with the uh, tube or the likes. You can do it your own format. Uh, we, we just <coughs> were, uh, we had been awarded in, in uh, Cannes last week. There, was a, there is a show which is quite important for <coughs> me, as a new TV. Uh, and we have been awarded with an um, original format. It's called Soccer Rapids. Uh, it's basically a, a show where that is made of uh, contribution from people that uh, send their comments after the match is in the UK. Uh, and this is mean, user-generated content. People are paying to upload. People are paying to share. People are paying to show, to see the show that is made of the different contributions. So, I mean, it's a completely different way uh, to see. You can make uh, money out of the virality of the content. Um, but that's right, you should generate content comments too, it's not just video. Mm -hmm. when, I, I, when I get my new Nokia phone or my Motorola phone, I notice there's a lot of video content already installed on the phone. And I've noticed even some of the plant or some of the deals, the press releases, you guys are doing a lot more off deck deals. So it's again, 60% of that outside the United States is off carrier. What's happening now when you start working more off deck, being not with the carrier on their portal? compared to being on deck. Is there an interesting view that's going on there between the carrier, wall garden, and what the handset manufacturers are doing? So you can, you must be referring to our sort of recent announcements around the Nokia content discoverer, which not many people in the US have actually been aware of, where we actually have partners such as Jamba or Handango, we actually offer content through them. Um, most recently, we, we announced uh, Warner Brothers catalog, so we actually offer their content directly through that channel. Um, EA, Turner, so we're actually bringing more of these big brands and hopefully some more very shortly that we can talk about where this content is there that the user can still consume it, go to the Jamba platform to consume it. The operator is still getting their percentage of the cut for doing nothing, being the bit pipe. And obviously, we need to sort of figure out how do we change that, or the operator needs to kind of give control back to the media companies. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> They're getting from the bit pipe. Most of us have unlimited data, or we're for a data plan. So they're not really making their cut because the carrier, in most cases, can take as much as 70% of the cut of the revenue. It depends which third right carrier you're dealing with. But the minute you have, you're going over the carrier, they're only getting a data cut, which is minuscule compared to the revenue cut. Uh, we still do give the operator an actual cut of that content feed for our new content discoverer. We're not cutting them out of the, the loop as of yet. <laughs> as of yet. Yes. 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 Uh, and here we, we host a meeting, uh, with a workshop with the main carrier in the New York and that took place last week. And I think there were uh, a couple of key messages coming. One is uh, that I mean, all carriers, and I'm not talking only of the US, but worldwide are going to um, have data, uh, flat data plan, which is something that will boost uh, the uh, consumption on the direct to consumer chat. At the moment, the video is pretty much a uh, product that you can um, you can get on that. Off, I mean, off deck, I mean, you can be cost of the data traffic. Probably the US is a very different situation, but I mean, you can. 
So this is a major trend. The other trend is um, carriers around the world are pretty much uh, open now to decrease their share of, of, of revenues. Uh, and basically, this is something that has to happen. It has to. So, uh, I mean, the, com the combination of these two elements, I think, sure will boost the uh, consumption on, on the direct consumer, which is a challenge, it's not mean it's not at all. Let's go to a question back there. There you are. Can you stand up, tell us your name, the name of your company, please? Sure, Michelle Lane, Lee Pedersen Media Group. Um, question, actually, this is me as a consumer and as a parent. Um, I think one of the things that I've seen frustrate people, especially if people have kids with cell phones, they love the idea of having content, but they never really know what it's going to cost, right? And if you have a kid, if you have a teenager who has a phone, you know you've got that surprise bill, right? So are you guys doing anything? As a consumer, I would love to have a phone, like my PC, where I can get access, either it's free because it's for advertising, but based on advertising, it's free to me, it's based on advertising, or I know exactly what I'm going to pay for it, and it's going to show up on my DSL bill or whatever. You know, it's very clear. Unlike on a lot of phones with the content, you don't know. So if your kid's out there and you're, you have your, all your services open and they're text messaging or they're downloading content, a lot of the time it's not very clear what that's going to cost me. Great How question. That's a price bill. Average so UK teenager, average UK is spending 70 pounds a month, a month on their mobile phone. 75 pounds a month, teenager, metro. Eventually, you're kind of right. So, that's <laughs> like a carrier issue. Yeah, can I answer that one? Can I answer that one? Can I answer that one real quick? The, the, the upside of that is a lot of the parents I know turn off all the services. That's so, you guys are losing money, right? Because instead of just having a flat fee, people go, oh, forget it, I'm not getting that bill, off. That's it. I think really the best solution for that is, is a pay as you go program. Um, and actually, that's one of our successes is, is having pay as you go programs so that the parent can then dictate, okay, this month you're only allowed you know, $30, prepaid. $40 prepaid. Um, but that has access to full content as well. And there's a meter. It's more expensive too, isn't it? Um, no, it's actually not. Um, con the content's the same price. You know, minutes are about 10 cents a minute. Um, we're, we're seeing a, a fairly good usage on, on pay as you go um, with the younger demographics simply because you don't have credit. You go through the parents, they want controlled usage. Um, I think it's important. I think it's a good market. You know, we're, we're going to wrap up. Any last questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. Stand up and yeah. your company. Call me from Outcast. Uh, guys, thanks for coming today. Um, uh, probably advertising, that's my goal. This is my real story. I want to know two things. Who's more valuable customer from the advertiser, you think? The customer that's on your site or looking at your content for maybe a half hour to an hour? or the 10 customers that are there for two to three minutes each. And secondly, what I want to know is, what are you doing as far as building models that are giving advertisers? Because the client says to the advertiser, what's my money doing, right? And they, I don't, I don't know, I'm just buying all these sites all over the place. And are we doing anything a little more specific, a little more targeted, are there any models that you're involved with that are giving me a better report that I can hand to my advertiser and say, this is who your dollar got to and this is what's going on. So obviously we're talking about mobile destination, not just sites, but right now I would say sort of the experience we've had in broadband is ultimately going to be relevant to the mobile space. And what we did on ABC.com is make Desperate Housewives and Lost and other programs available for a small number of commercial interruptions, uh, three 30-second breaks and a pre-roll, sort of custom ads, truly interactive advertising. And the survey that we did said that 86, there was 86% recall of people who engage the content, remember the advertiser, and had sort of an affinity for that advertiser. So I, I don't know that it's necessarily sort of number of minutes. I think it's are people engaged with the product, and are they paying attention to the <laughs> advertiser or advertisements, and are they coming back more often? So probably the person who's going to come back, come back multiple times a week or multiple times a month is somebody who really likes your product, as opposed to somebody who comes in once for 10 minutes. Again, I'm not necessarily going to get into that argument. Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily think that uh, the, the person who stays longer is any better than the person who comes, you know, in and out a number of times. I guess it depends on the impact of, you know, what they're doing. Uh, from an advertising perspective, I think the, the, the medium itself is becoming more interesting. Um, you talk about the, the charm of, of mobile, you know, once you can identify down to an individual person, and you can actually do direct response type uh, advertising, it's going to be interesting. But the, the truth of the matter right now is we have better information on our PC-based customers than I do on my mobile customers. I mean, I'm finding things about mobile, about who bought a game or did a couple months later, 
I mean, it's not one-to-one -one track. It's certainly nothing I can hand to an advertiser and say, I'm going to hammer this guy who wants Diet Coke or Lime, you know, by any stretch. Um, that needs to improve over time. You do have this one-to-one -one connection where people aren't going to skip. You can't ignore banners. So if you're with a header or an interstitial or something else, you actually have a, it's a more valuable piece of advertising creative because it, you can't ignore it. But there's a, there's a fundamental, you know, problem that could sneak into the business if you just constantly slam people with advertising that they don't want. I mean, people do like to skip ads on TiVo. I mean, that's just kind of a fact. So last thing real quick, if we look at the idea of the New York Times or CBS, when you ask these media companies the age-old question, what is your product, they generally fail that question because they say the product is content. And if we look at who the customer is, the customer in a lot of ways is the advertiser. The advertiser pays the bill for that that media company to get to their product being the reader, listener, viewer. So the product in the media company side is the consumer. That's the product. And to understand the product makes the customer, the advertiser, happier because they're narrowing in, it's higher CPMs obviously, but they get the right buyer or viewer to the advertiser using the content. Do you see the customer of these small services as a product also? Or do you just see them as someone that's going to pay a monthly bill and that's it? Or do you have to align yourself closer with the advertiser to build a better product on the other side? Does that make sense what I'm saying? No, not at all. Sorry, Bernie. I'll go to you. I'll go to Mike. I look at, you know, I have, I have a number of customers, right? The uh, because we have a number of business models. We have ad support, and we're going to be rolling out ad support on mobile. We don't presently, but we do on broadband. We have uh, end consumer consumption, you know, pay-per-view, single purchase, download and own type models. And then we have uh, subscription-based services that can either run sub-fee basis that are going to be maybe end Advertising or on the subscription side? Um, I think advertising will be larger than subscription um, out of the gate and, and, you know, for the foreseeable future. I think there's going to be still a, uh, in, in media, in the media world in general, the purchase of content and the use of content across platforms will be another, the second largest. So buy once, use without advertising anywhere. And then the next biggest model will just be watch it anywhere, accept some advertising, you get a little bit more freedom of what you can do with the content, and not as many DRM rules and such at play, um, and it's supported with advertising. So those are the two models. It's like five digital Hollywoods. You know, in February, we have summer. There's one in London in about uh, six weeks, which I'm really excited about. Let's uh, place ourselves here at the exact panel a year from now. This is a 30 second roundup of what the industry will go through in that one year. So when we're looking at our, our handset, our device, what are we seeing and what are we consuming? Give me 30 seconds to 20. Paul? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> more religious. Oh, okay. uh, user generated content, de definitely uh, ad supported content is, is a big one for us. I think people are willing to uh, you know, experience uh, advertising if, if there is free content involved. Um, um, we're looking at you know media flow versus TVA is another big one for us. Um, original programming is huge, so bringing uh, top Hollywood um, talent and creating just for mobile content. Uh, so sort of Little Bush and uh, uh, Little Hollywood that we're creating now. Okay. What? Uh, my expectation is that the total subscriber base should triple in the next year from where it is presently. Um, where is it presently? Maybe about five, five and change. Fifteen million. Come right now. Maybe twelve to fifteen. Okay. Where I think we'll be. Um, I think you'll see a lot more high-end services, the, the advent of true uh, programming, uh, longer form programming will be introduced, um, and that, that will be a big, big push into the business, and I think you'll start to see, as we just mentioned, user-generated content kind of find its place in mobile, um, and I think you'll see a blending of uh, additional models starting to emerge, uh, subscription-based tiers and such, though I think those will trail kind of the base packages and add support. Um, but you will also see a lot more people watching movies on their phone next year. There you go. Tim. Uh, I would say not so different from the market we have right now. How exciting is that? Depends on how you're doing as a company. So, so what do you think? Are you, do you really think it's going to be the same last year? No, no, no. Not really not the same. I think there will be more video. And uh, I agree uh, with Mike. Uh, definitely, uh, we will start.
start having a user-generated content monetized on, on mobile. Uh, okay, and in terms of business model, we, uh, I think we start seeing a mixed business model of services that are paid for by customers, but not at the price, and then also subsidized by uh, some other types. So actually, what's happening in Europe is we over here, actually. Okay, Mike? I think this time next year, we will be we'll have launched, oh, and we, you'll see live news, you'll see live music, live sports, you'll see the simulcast on television, and you'll see movies. So you in here will change the industry <laughs> for what you're going to be doing here. <coughs> Seriously, a year from now. That's, That's the plan. Okay. Seriously. Bernie, what do you think? A year from now. I think a year from now, Google buys a kind of ball comp. <laughs> <laughs> Consuming uh, full episodes of TV programs, people will be consuming full episodes of movies on mobile devices. Uh, I think the number of users, again, I, I'm not going to predict whether it's 5x or 3x or whatever, but internationally, the numbers in the next year will be staggering. I mean, just if you looked at China Mobile's announcement yesterday, and we didn't talk about China at all, but China Mobile, one of the four carriers in China, has 287 million subscribers. Oh, they want all the so, so, and uh, they did a test with World Cup, and they had 800 subs in about a week. It was sort of astounding. And they're actually paying money. I mean, China people paying yes. equivalent of two or three dollars US. I'm not, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And you can also, if you'd like to, I can sell you a couple of DVDs that I purchased in China. Um, <laughs> that, I think that was... Did you get Departed yet? Departed? Departed. No, I'm not going to Departed. Oh, Departed, the movie. Yeah, it's, I, it's definitely out in, uh, in China. <laughs> Sure, yeah, you have to hear everybody else, so you have to have the best answers. So if you look at sort of the device perspective, obviously bigger screens, you know, VGA 600, 640 by 480, definitely need that more Wi-Fi, uh, better resolution, which can take advantage of this great content, whether it be movie content, uh, you know, obviously recently Nokia purchased Loud Eye, which is our music business, so how is that going to integrate? Is it going to be a competitor to, to iTunes? Who knows? But, you know, there's definitely going to be a more high-end services on these devices that can enable us as consumers to actually have a more engaging experience and actually you know, have really true one device instead of having to have a, a camera, a phone, and an iPod. How many do you have right now? Well, at least I have 10 devices, but that's another story. I got prototype devices, but truly I really have one device, which is, you know, it does email, it does two megapixel camera, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got everything. And I, it's a music player because I can put a two gigabyte card in here and use it. So I truly don't need that. I can get podcasts, audio, video on this device. So you know, this is the future. And you can get it at any Nokia school, any Nokia flagship store in New York, any point in time, only five hundred dollars. So that lasts for two hours. Who here gets my daily intelligence report? Raise your hand. Is it a good report? Okay, if you want to get it for free, just give me your card. I do a daily intelligence report. What's going to be here? Technology industry. Let's give our a panel of <laughs> <laughs>